Hello everyone, and welcome to your 54th Cocoa Programming Tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering how we can make custom NS buttons in Cocoa. So, uh, we're going to take a little break from view-based NS table views. We'll come back to them in, you know, fair future. But uh, for now, we're going to talk about something really fun and near and dear to my heart, which is custom NS buttons. So what's a custom button? Well, let's say, you know, you've been working with AtKit or Coco for a long time, and you've uh, grown to know all these lovely custom buttons, right? You know, we've got so many types. We've got, oh, I don't know, this help button with a beautiful, beautiful question mark on it. So I can use everything, right? Every button is covered, and so I'm fine. And then I ask you, well, let's make a blue button, right? I got this app and it's got this blue background. I kind of want to make a button that matches it, right? I don't I don't really want this ugly white thing just sitting there. So, let's make a blue button. And you say to me, "Well, that's fine. I'll just uh, you know, change the style. We got every style imaginable. Where's the blue button?" Uh, hmm, blue button's not there. And uh, I don't know. There's it's no color stuff here. I don't think there's a set color method, so uh, I guess I'm out of luck there. Um, oh, I know, I know what I can do. I can, I can set an image on the button, right? That's what everyone can do. So let's take this button, and uh, because the push buttons don't really expand properly, we'll change it to, oh, I don't know, a square button, for example. And uh, we'll set the image on the square button. So let's make it. Uh, I have a, I have an image here. So button dot png, and uh, it's, it's over in my supporting files. And uh, we'll scale it so that it's axis independent. And then I run this. Let's see how beautiful. Oh my goodness, what a beautiful button! And uh, yeah, look, looks like it's working fine. There we go. There's our app for the day. Ship that off to the App Store, and we're good to go. Obviously, this is not the way we want to do things, right? This doesn't work well at all. And so, what is the only way left to do it? Well, if I was using anything that was 10.7 or below, I would say you have to subclass NS button cell. You'd be like, what the heck's an NS button cell, right? Well, little history lesson, I guess. Um, when Coco was first arrived and AppKit had all these great cool controls and um, the problem back then wasn't really about making stuff look cool, it was really about resources. So uh, the resources, like the amount of uh, processing power or memory or whatever that we had wasn't really that high. So we tried to conserve that kind of stuff. And what did we do to you know, make that work? Well, we use NS button cells or NS cell, which is a general class for drawing stuff. And so in case you're not aware, every button or every NS button has two components. It has the button, which is a subclass of NS views, so, so NS button is sort of a subclass of NS view. And then every button has an NS button cell, which is a subclass of NS cell. NS cell does all the cool drawing stuff to actually make your button look like a button. And then the NS uh, button itself, which is that subclass of NS view, handles mouse events and actually putting it into a view. So why did they split these up? Well, instead, they really just wanted to have, like I was saying, conserve the resources. So they didn't want to have, you know, if we have eight checkboxes, we didn't really want to put eight views onto the screen and then have that, you know, kind of processing power and extra memory lying around because we have a bunch of views. So we're going to make them into cells. And so that's what they did. And it worked all right. You know, it was fine for the time. But um, as time's going on, we like to make stuff easier. So iOS came out, and what did it do? Well, it used a core animation layer for every UI view. And it, or a UI button is a subclass of UI view, and so what does it do? Well, if I want to have a, you know, a special image as my button, I can set any image to be the background image of the button. I just say, hey, button, set background image to this, and then I say whether it's for the press state or the not press state or whatever they call it, and uh, then I'm good to go. So that's how easy it is in iOS. And why does that work? Well, because they have core animation layers or layers backing all of the views in iOS. So every view in iOS has a core animation layer. And what this means is that the layer can take the contents of the image 
and draw that. And it has a bunch of little nifty methods for doing that. So that's why you can get away with cool stuff like that in iOS. Now, back to our side cocoa world, we got left in the dust, right? We, you know, 10.5 came along and added layers, but none of the app controls really got updated to work with them. So we were stuck with all the crappy legacy stuff that came with the old Coco. So what do we have now? Well, like I was saying, in 10.8, there is now a new way that we can use to essentially draw the button. So what we want to do is layer back our button. And, you know, if you are, I'm not really going to dive into too many details in this tutorial, but if you want to know a lot more, like if you like this tutorial or want to know more about this stuff, check out the core animation series that I've started on the, the channel. And we dive into tons of details in that series. So if you want, uh, check that out and uh, you'll learn everything you want to know about layers and good stuff. Okay, so um, anyway, we want to layer back this button. So how can we do this? Well, we can go over to this panel over here and you'll see that this is the core animation layer section. And this panel basically has a lot to do with, uh, well, it's called the view effects inspector. So it has a bunch of stuff to do with the, the effects of a view. And one of those things is adding core animation layers. So you could uh, just select the checkbox next to the square button and that would enable you to have a core animation layer or a, a, a layer backed view for this button. Now what you usually want to do though is instead of uh, setting it directly on the thing you're looking at or you know trying to add a layer to, usually you want to enable this for the super view. So in this case if I put a checkbox next to the view which is the content view, this whole view that's in this NS window, then this will give it a layer. So once you have a layer on this view, it means that every sub view will also have a layer of its own. So even though we haven't explicitly checked the checkbox next to the square button, because we checked the checkbox for the view, it will have its own layer and every subclass thereof will implicitly get its own layer. So the button, even though we didn't check it, will have a layer. So that's good. So we'll leave it as that and uh, we'll continue on. So how can we subclass this or how can we, well, I just gave it away. We want to subclass it. So make a new file, objective C class, and we want to make a subclass of NS button and we'll call it in this case, blue button, just because I have blue images uh, that we're going to use. So we go ahead and subclass that, save it, bada boom, bada bing. We've got our blue button. All right, so let's go and to the source section and delete all this stuff. And uh, before I get going on this, let's just change this button to be of the class blue button. And there we go. All right, so what do we tell this blue button to explicitly do? Well, there's two things. First off, a very easy method, which is wants update layer usually all the drawing code goes through draw rect, right? If we want to do custom drawing, then we go to draw rect and we do stuff there. And draw rect handles all the crazy stuff for drawing our button and the like. If we don't really want to do that though, and we'd rather instead go through the layer, we want to, we want to return yes to this method. So this will say, hey, you know, we're layer backed. We already know that, but this tells us that we want to use the update layer method to actually update the layer uh, whenever it needs a change. So whenever we press the button, for example, or we move outside the button when, when we're pressing it, then uh, once update layer will be called, or uh, specifically this method update layer. So by returning yes to this, this means that this method will be called. Now what do we do in update layer? Well, we update the layer. So we, uh, in this case, want to know two things. We want to know if the button's pressed or not. Maybe that's one thing, but you get the idea. So how do we know if the button's pressed? Well, there is no pressed state on the button. Every NS control has a state, but that's really not part. Um, it doesn't really apply to NS buttons in particular. So we don't want to look at that. What we want to look at is the cell, surprisingly. So the NS button cell has a property, or I don't know if it's a property, probably not a property, but a method, which is is highlighted. So is highlighted is a method that tells you whether the 
the button essentially is pressed or not. If it is highlighted, then it's pressed. So we can check this to see if um, we're actually pressing down on the button. Now if we are, then we want to say self.layer. The layer property will get our core animation layer that we've added to our button. And we want to set the contents of our layer. So we set the contents to be an image. So we say NS image, image named, and the image we want is the button pressed. And I'm gonna just hide this. Button press.png, like so. And the other case is when we're not pressing it. So self.layer.contents gets NS image image named and the normal one is just called button.png and in case you just want to look at these images the button press one looks like this it's just this very small rectangle and uh, we'll see what that does in just a bit but it's this very small rectangle and uh, the button.png is the same thing just a little tinted uh, lighter blue all right, so that's all we have to do. We now know if it's pressed, we're gonna show the press button. If not, then we will show the normal one. So let's go ahead and run it and see what we get. So we can compile and run, blah, 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 blah. And uh, here we go. So there's this little error uh, down in the bottom right, and you might see this, uh, I don't really know. This, this tutorial for me is kind of completely experimental because there is no source code that I'm taking this off of. So um, for me, there is this odd error that seems to pop up, but I don't really understand why it does. Because, for example, if I change this button, so quickly change this button to be the normal type of push button, and then I run it, it will not give me this error. And then if I quit that and bring it back to be a square button, then the error will magically go away. So gonna have fun and resize it for the sake of it and run and as you can see there's now no error anyway I don't understand why that error pops up but that's how you can fix it if it does because you'll probably maybe run into it all right so anyway uh, with that being said we have this button here and as you might be able to notice these edges really don't look right they're just not they just don't look right so why is that well um, basically what we're doing is we're setting that image that square little button image to be the contents of the layer and the layer just stretches that image to fill the contents of the layer and as a result it stretches the image and so the image looks bad the button still works fine and it'll still switch you know still switch the images as we click it but um, it's not stretching properly so what can we do to fix that well we simply go back and we'll quit this for now and there's one little property we need to set on the layer. So um, we want to say self.layer.contents gravity. No, not gravity. We want content center. And we specify a rectangle that's essentially going to be in the center of the button. So what does this mean? Well, I created this little handy image to kind of explain this. So what we're going to do is break up the image into parts. So we're going to define this content center, and this is a rectangle, and this rectangle is this little area right here. So this area that's in the center. And as the thing kind of suggests, it's the center of your content. And what it does then is breaks your image up into nine parts. And this is known as, uh, what do they call it, nine slicing or nine part slicing or something like that. But what it means is that you define this center rectangle, these parts on the edges, the nice you know, curves that we want to not be stretched will remain intact, but everything in these components here will then be stretched. So this is good. This is what we want though, because what it means is that if we stretch the image lengthwise or up and down, you know what I mean? Uh, then it means that it will just repeat the pixels that are in the center. So it'll just repeat this section as we stretch it across. So that's exactly what we want, right? and uh, we just want to keep the nice edges looking as they are. So if we set the content center, then this will happen. So we just have to say CG, mm, CG rect make, and we just define the center. So the center of this is 0 
0 0.5. The width and height, uh, if a little trick that you can use is to set them to be zero. And if they're zero, then it will essentially just take the pixel right in the center or wherever this origin is. So wherever the point that we define it, it will just take that pixel area right in the center. And that's the rectangle it will use. So back to our little image here. Essentially, if we set a rectangle to be smack dab in the center, right? Then it'll just take the pixels that are on that row and on that row. And then as we expand it, it will use that. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this and see that we get what we were hoping. So as you can see, oh, look at that beautiful button, right? We can click it and it works exactly as we'd expect. So if uh, let's just do a little more playing around with it here to see it in action. So if I shrink my window a bit here, Oops, shrink it and I'll expand it over here. All right, and uh, that should be good. And let's just see how this button does as it's re resized to make sure that everything works. And as you can see, the button works perfectly and the corners are perfectly, uh, you know, they stay as they are. The image isn't being stretched on the corners, it's just being stretched from the center and then it just repeats the button. And the button works beautifully. And yeah, that's, uh, that's how you can make a very easy custom button if you're using Mountain Lion or higher. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you have any other questions, just leave them in the comments section below. Please subscribe to the channel and to me on Twitter as well. I will see you in an upcoming tutorial. See you then.